Yeah, so the first game, I guess between uh, Brady and I, we had a few friends along with us that wanted to go, but we all grew up watching soccer. Um, so we were we were into soccer. There's me and our, our university team, uh, why not go? Um, the Campus Activities Board was doing a scarf giveaway for the the first home game, uh, which actually was the opening of the new stadium uh, out there behind the dome. At the time, I thought it was only going to be like five to like ten of us going to this soccer game. We show up to the Camp and Neil, and they were like, you know, there's already 40 people there, and I'm like, holy cow, this is... This is really something. I didn't expect it. I'm sure no one else did. It was actually really cool to see a bunch of like students kind of walk over the hill because I feel like women's soccer, especially like at UNI, has never really had like a bunch of people come to our game because we used to be off campus and not have our own field. But now that we like have our own field and we saw like a bunch of students coming over, it just it felt really nice and it gave us like a confidence boost almost, being like, oh, people like want to see us do well, like. We gotta like show people what we're made of and like actually like play well and win now that we have like people here actually like supporting us. It was actually so cool because my first two years like no one really showed up like it was always just our parents or whatever so then when we saw people coming we were like hold up what is like who are they and then you guys were like playing drums and everything. I think for me, like as a freshman, I didn't know any different, but then like seeing everybody else's reactions, like the returners who like haven't experienced that, I think it was super cool. Just like, it was exciting for us to like have fans, but I think for everyone who played without them and not on our field, it was special for you guys. It's nice to see support for women's soccer since it isn't super huge in America. So it's nice to see like a lot of people supporting us. After that first game, Spencer and I decided to hold the first meeting for the soccer student section, not only because we wanted to stay organized for future games, but also to try and get as many students as we can involved. But the main reason why we had a meeting, though, was because we really wanted to stand out from other student sections. And by doing that, we wanted to go to an away game, like a, f a drive further than three hours. and. Well, um, that away game happened to be against South Dakota. Yeah, so South Dakota, uh, uh, my personal biggest rival, but we played South Dakota twice. Personally, I didn't really have any hatred towards South Dakota until we played them and then they beat us on our senior night. Uh, eventually, South Dakota ends up winning that game 1-0 on a set piece. It's, their set piece is very good, very scary. Uh, so eventually they got one in. So we lost 1-0 off a set piece, so kind of a pretty tough loss. Yeah, losing that first game at home in South Dakota really set the tone for the away game now. So Spencer and I try to get as many uh, UNI students to go to the away game. It wasn't that far in comparison to other teams that we were going to play against, so it wasn't that difficult to convince people. We had a good crew of us. Uh, there was about six of us. Right from the start, we were very loud. We were very obnoxious towards the other team, and we just tried to do as much as we could to, to support the Panthers. Um, for us, I think it was super cool because no one had ever traveled for us. Like, half, most of our parents didn't even go. So, like, you guys being... <laughs> so... <laughs> we thought it was a joke. Honestly. At first? Well, we heard There's people no cheering for us, and then we looked over and saw it was you guys, and we were shocked. And then, when like, during the game, it was so fun because we it felt like a home game because you guys are all there cheering. And we got into the... Like, the whole bench <laughs> got into it, and then... I think it was just really cool to have other people there. We honestly saw a difference in play though. Like even though we lost that away game as well, you could tell that the team played better. I don't know if it was because of us. That's what I told people. But it really set the tone for the rest of the season and just motivated, or me at least, it motivated me to be even louder, try and get more support out to these games because I really felt like we were starting to make a difference. We were starting to 
really come together as a student section, as an organization almost, and it really set the tone for the rest of the season. Even though we were off to a shaky start to that 2021 season, we're still trying our best to bring out as many students as we could to all the games. And what was really cool was like, we started to really see the appreciation from like the parents, the players, and that just kept motivating us to go to more and more games. My parents are really supportive of the community support behind the program. Um, we're obviously being from Waverly, like we've always had a ton of community involvement and stuff, and especially at this level and for a women's program, you don't always see that at colleges and stuff. So they always like say things like, wow, your student section was great today. Like it's good to see people from campus. And I mean, I think he's your biggest fan. There's a Panther Prowlers fan club. He's the president. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what we should start. Yes. That's so smart. <laughs> the fan club for well, the, the fan, fan club. club would be started by my dad. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. he comes to the games just to see you guys, so. He brings them cookies. Yeah, like, not us. doesn't take me to dinner yeah. brings you guys cookies. <laughs> you guys definitely had an impact. I mean, when you have fans that are cheering for you besides parents, because parents have um, just some sort of like egg on, but to have fans there that are just there for soccer, not because they're related to anybody or anything like that, and then to hear you guys go crazy over the littlest things of a ball going out of bounds for us, uh, it makes a huge difference. I think the student section actually helps us on the field. It gives us co like confidence and more like energy to beat the other team since you guys are like harassing the other team in a good way. <laughs> so it makes us fight harder. You guys are like getting in their heads to like make us um, do better or like make us have an advantage. It's helped us score quite a few times this season. It's kind of fun just having some fun harassment towards the other team though. Um, getting to the players' heads and uh, honestly, for some teams it wasn't noticeable, but the one time it was, was against Southern Illinois. Yeah, so the Southern Illinois game was a pretty exciting game. It's pretty late in the season. I believe it's our last home game of the season in the fall of 21. We tell the goalkeeper, Maddie, uh, specifically, uh, was not having it. And it makes sense. We were winning that game at that point. And, you know, she's had a long season on the road. And you have a bunch of random college people now yelling at you during Maddie's coming back to the net, now on the other side of the field, but we switched, and so we're very happy to see her. And so we're all, we're all cheering, and I believe we're doing a left, right, left, right, chant as she walks towards us, and she is beyond pissed, and ends up screaming at us. Do, do we quote her? <laughs> do you want to quote her? Uh, I don't know if that's appropriate, though. What? Well, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Um, so Maddie told us to uh, shut the f up. Yeah, at the top of her lungs. <laughs> yeah, like all the, all the parents heard it. The entire UNI bench was just like cracking up and, and stuff like that. And oh, it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> maybe not a shining moment for the Salukis. The rest of the game goes on. The Salukis, classic 2021 Salukis. They lost again. And <laughs> <laughs> and we won our last home game, so we were very happy, excited. Uh, Southern Illinois, probably the exact opposite, but we're not cheering for them, so we don't care. Honestly, it was moments like that where uh, where we realized what we were doing was a huge impact on the UNI soccer team. We're pushing them to hopefully more victories to have them play better, have the other team thrown off by us. And it was just a huge impact and for that next season we wanted to continue that 
we wanted to we wanted to make it real. We wanted to make the student section a real thing. And had a pretty good community of people that were well supported that also had the common interest of cheering and supporting our team. So it was late in the fall semester where it really started to get the idea of forming an official student organization uh, that would be recognized by the university for our student section. And I was talking to my friends about this and, and Brady in specific about what that might look like. And we started to lay the framework for a club, a club name. We spent many hours brainstorming when we first thought of the name PSP, we were sitting in Spencer's dorm room on 12th floor Bender, um, and we've been trying to think of names for about a week or so. Uh, and, and we're just sitting there, just this is probably about a 45 minute just time slot. We're just sitting there, just thinking, just thinking. All of a sudden, I, I can't remember who it was. One of us just went, "I've got it, PSP Panther Soccer Prowlers," and then boom, like we just ran with that, and it's pretty gold. From there, after he came up with a name, we approached Chris, one of the assistant coaches, about the advisor position for our club, and he was accepting of that position <laughs> and uh, very supportive of our decision. So once we had all the framework, we, Brady and I, ended up applying to make the organization official, and the biggest trick, in my opinion, to getting the club actually recognized as a student organization is I did not know how on board the student government, or I guess to generalize the university, would be on board with funding a student organization that is literally just a student section. The committee was very excited to see a student section for the soccer team come through. When we voted on it for org fight, it was a unanimous decision. And then through Senate, uh, when Senate voted on it, it was also a unanimous decision and everyone was very excited to see a new student section for the soccer team, which is awesome. Was it a hard decision to like vote on it? Because I'm assuming you were one of the voters. Like, was it hard for you to like decide whether you want it to be a part of a, like a funding organization or not? Or For me personally, it was not a hard decision. I also know some of the executive members, so I kind of knew that it was coming through already before I saw a bill written for it. But easily for me, I, I don't even think I asked any questions about it. I just decided off the bat to vote yes. And pretty much that was the reaction of most of the council. A lot of them were very excited to see a new club geared towards the sports and also through Senate. Everyone was also, everyone had a very similar reaction. They were very excited about it. And it, for me personally, voting through Senate and through OrgFi, it was an automatic yes for me both times. Seeing that email in my inbox was almost a validation of all the efforts that we'd been doing uh, for a month or two of behind the scenes work. It was something that was just very, like this is official, I'm, I'm a part of this. And this is something that uh, my friends and I have started and it's something we can plan to do uh, in the fall and for many years to come. It was awesome knowing that we were finally official. We were finally a true organization that can be taken seriously. But the issue I kept having, and it kept going through my mind, like over and over and over again, because we got approved in January. The first spring game was in late March, early April. I don't remember. How can we stand out? How can we stand out from other, not only other student organizations, but other student sections? Sure, we went to an away game. That was phenomenal. But any student section can do that. So in my mind, I'm like, there has to be something we can do to really just really nail it in, to really stand out from other student sections. Something that can really cement our identity. So when was Cheeto born? February 5th of last year, so 2021. I was at work and Brady was babysitting Cheeto. And Brady was like, hey, can I get Cheeto, can I take Cheeto to a soccer game? And I was like, I mean, yeah, sure. 
why not? You gotta get out of the dorms to get to meet some friends, you know? And that's kind of how it started. Cheeto was very cute. He was so small. He just spit in my little hand and knew his fan. Um, it was kind of, at first I was like, what in the world is a cat doing at a soccer game? We embraced Cheeto as a mascot, so um, it was pretty, pretty funny and pretty cool. I mean, I think, well, we didn't realize you had a cat until, like, I don't know how it got to the team, but someone said that Brady brought a cat, and we all got so excited and tried to run over, but we had to talk to Bruce. So the entire time Bruce was talking, we all were, like, looking around, like, can we go see this cat and figure out what's going on? It was just really kind of goofy to see, like, an actual cat, and we were just super excited that we actually had, like, kind of a face behind the name, or, like, per se, but... We're all big sweethearts when it comes to animals and stuff. I didn't really expect Cheeto to kind of take off the way he did. I thought it was just going to be like, oh, there's a cat. It's just a cat. And then the way that it took off, I was like, oh my gosh. I didn't realize how big of an impact that this cat is actually having on people. Like, Cheeto makes every... Cheeto made me happy, and I was like, I'm so glad that Cheeto is able to make a bunch of other people happy, and I'm so glad that the soccer team loves him. During the game, it's really cool, just because, like, the fact that we have, like, an actual cat to, like, represent us is, like, I mean, we could be, like, the Panthers and have mascots running around, but it's not the same when it's a real thing. Having Cheeto there as our, as our mascot to represent our organization was huge, because it started to create attention towards our organization, because, like, before the cat, like, I genuinely feel like not a lot of people, like, even realized who we were. We were just a group of people going to these games. But with the addition of Cheeto, like, it brought even more attention to us. And it ultimately was a huge factor of how we could grow our numbers. <laughs> Cheeto is just something that the people in our student section can get excited for and to see and the players can get excited for. If it encourages and helps build an environment, then I'm all for it. Ultimately though, going into that second season, we had a lot more to look forward to. Because at this point, we were an official organization. We, we had a lot more things organized and we started to really get creative with the different ideas of like how we're gonna try and grow our organization. So we were able to apply and join the student organization fair that the university does and we printed out I believe a hundred or so flyers and we set up our banner and our drum and we just, we just let the people come to us and we talked to probably hundreds of people that day and we got rid of all of our flyers we were heavily advertising the game well I joined the Panthers uh, during the welcome week stuff they had a booth um, during like the club fair and it was actually Will, the uh, ESPN guy, who uh, came up and was uh, to me and my buddy and was like, hey, uh, we got this cool club, we kind of just pull up behind uh, women's soccer goalies and we'll uh, do a bunch of chants and stuff and maybe you should join us and we would kind of like, my buddy and I talked it over for like two seconds and we're like, yep, we're in. So that was about that and motivation. And I'm um, just going to the, uh, the organs the student organization fair when you guys were playing the drill. You seemed very fun. That was the only, <laughs> the only thing that was interesting. Everyone else was just sitting at their tables, very quiet unless they were talking to someone, and then it's just, you hear the drum out of nowhere. Where's that coming from? Yeah, no, the student org fair was great. That was a great turnout. That was a great uh, way for us to recruit students because like, because I remember it was a Thursday when the student org fair was and like, you know, all these freshmen are like coming around and seeing what different organizations were a thing. And what was great about it was like three players stopped, you know, three soccer players on the team stopped by our booth and said hi. And that definitely gained some interest with our booth, you know, having D1 athletes stop by and say hi. Like that's kind of like a big deal. Like, you know, it's an attention grabber. So that was huge for Sophia, Izzy and uh, Allison Whitaker to stop by our booth and you know say hi because it's like dang like you know that, that attracted some people that wanted to come by and stop and you know see what's up. There's the perfect pitch. It's like we got a game this afternoon and one on the weekend as well. And so it's just the 
perfect pitch. We got two games before classes even start. We're literally doing nothing else. Why not come to the soccer game? So that was our main push. This year was the student org fair, and we knew we wanted to get a lot of freshmen out to that first game and hopefully retain them for the games to come. You guys grew, and as a student section, like almost fourfold of the amount of people that you had, and uh, that was pretty cool to see. Um, it was definitely a cool experience. I feel like warming up college soccer, you have definitely enough a lot of nerves and like excitement at the same time. But having like a big student crowd like banging the drum and just cheering for you, it kind of gets you like hyped up, gives you goosebumps, mm -hmm. and just gets you in like the game mentality. Yeah, it was really nice. Like I wasn't expecting many like students to come or be there, but like once you showed up at the base that day that we had like sign it, I was like, whoa, like people actually care. Like this, I'm in college soccer now. Like yeah. this isn't just me and my friends going to watch my club soccer games. This is like an actual community who care about the sport. So going into it the first time, I didn't really know what to expect, you know, because I'm coming on as this, you know, nervous little freshman kid who doesn't really do much stuff uh, in high school. But going in and it was just, pretty good sized you know group of guys and we went over and we had fun and the team played well I didn't really know what to expect out of you and I soccer team but I was pretty impressed and I thought the chance were a lot of fun and we were just kind of hanging out having a good time so we had a decent turnout for a Thursday game but we Spencer and I really promoted the crap out of that first Sunday home game of the season not only because like we knew that weekend games would be the bigger hit on the year those Sunday morning games Sunday, not Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon games would be a bigger hit, but also because we wanted revenge from last season. We wanted to do whatever it, it took to be, to really bring the home field advantage for when we had our rematch against South Dakota. So South Dakota fall of 2022 was the first weekend game and the first major home game. Uh, for many reasons. One, our, it's now an informal rivalry between at least the soccer teams and at least our student section and the other opposing soccer team that we knew we needed to get students out to this game. The weather's still nice. It's the first weekend and we're playing uh, one of our rival teams. Our rivalry with South Dakota is, in my opinion, one of the biggest ones. Um, Especially after losing to them twice last year, there was, and not by much, it was only a goal. And um, we definitely used that for motivation. And this year when we played them, we were super fired up. Like we wanted to just go at them. We needed to win. Not only because of the importance of the team, but the players needed to win for our sake. Like we, Spencer and I, as president and vice president, we definitely relied on the soccer team to pull off a huge win against South Dakota because if we didn't get that win, because like that was the most hyped game of the season for the student section, we needed a win to really set the tone. And thank God for Caroline Hazen. Great pass from Ashley, and the best part was just turning around and seeing all my teammates. You know, it was so exciting. I knew how much that game meant to everybody, you know, it being South Dakota, so it was just a really great feeling. Yeah, I think scoring the first goal just kind of really showed me, like, that I belong on this playing field. Like, college soccer wasn't this big, scary, you know, experience, and that I belong here and I can make a difference on this team. She gave me so much encouragement after that first goal, and this is one of my favorite moments uh, at watching a soccer game to this day and we ended up winning that game pretty we didn't run into any trouble so it's very very solid game we scored a few goals and had a great atmosphere for our first major home game of the season and we just wanted to keep that steam rolling into the rest of the games that was great though because of the success of the south dakota game and like the interest we gained from the student section of that game it just carried on for the rest of the season and like we got to throw a bunch of different events throughout the season we got to host a couple uh watch parties for for the away games we got to host uh two different tailgates and yeah no especially that iowa tailgate we had a big showing for that and although 
we ended up losing that game pretty badly. Um, you know, all the you know all the students stayed till the end. Like it's not like we were we weren't loyal, and that just ultimately it it inspires me. It it makes me happy to know that like I'm not the only one supporting this team, and that. And, and what was really cool was that the players really sh started to show appreciation for us and the more they started to appreciate us and the more they started to value the student section, the more the students wanted to come back and keep doing what we were doing. I think the student section actually helps us on the field. It gives us co like confidence and more like energy to beat the other team since you guys are like harassing the other team in a good way, <laughs> so it makes us fight harder I think gives us the energy we need. I definitely think having a student section has an impact on the game because at least like for us it's positive because we know people are there supporting us and like want us to do well. But definitely adds like a big energy to like the game and like when you guys like chirp the other team like it makes you I don't know it makes it more fun and then our bench gets into it and you guys get into it and then yeah it makes a big difference. Yeah, as a freshman, definitely having the student section there really helps just because then you know you have people that are constantly showing you positive support and are there because they care about you and the team and want to see you guys succeed. So just, I felt really grateful to have the student section there the first few games especially because it really helped calm my nerves and get me used to the environment. I think the student section has had a really positive impact on our games, I think. Just like all the hype and the trash talk and all that, it kind of like helps boost your confidence and that type of thing. Um, I think it's had a great impact and we've never done like the run out tunnel thing and that's just a great confidence booster. Like right even before the game starts just to keep morale high and all that. So it's really great. What was really nice was that we were able to get funding for a variety of different things. Whether that was uh, tailgates, whether that was uh, the drum, the banner. The main thing that we got funding for that was huge and really showed what our organization was made out of was uh, was gas money for going to away game trips. But yeah, just seeing some players do a do a double take off to us and like, hey, wait, what is happening? Yep, we drove there. At Indiana State this year, um, we were just kind of in a little bit of a low and we just kind of needed that like boost of morale and stuff like that and when we found out that you guys were coming it just really lifted all of our spirits and gave us a sense of pride. I mean I think we were all kind of tired from the drive and mm -hmm. it's just being far from home, having homework to do so mm -hmm. just showing up to the game and seeing you guys there just knowing that like we had something to play for like they drove this far so we should like put on our best performance yeah. for them and get a win for them. Yeah I think it made us all really happy just to see you there like that we have support like we're all just kind of like down like oh here we have to play far away from home and then we see you and you're like okay now we have like something to work for like you need to do well it's just again very nice to see that we have support even for our away games when you and i soccer never really had support before you guys even at home games so it's just really nice to see that you guys care that much to come support us even on the road and it makes a big difference it was kind of funny because I mean, Indiana State home game, so they have all their fans there, but I don't even think you could really hear them compared to, like, our fans. Like, you would have almost thought if you heard it, like, it was a, like, home game for us. Brady and I are making plenty of noise for just us two, I believe. Uh, we were told by an away fan that we sounded like 5,000 people in that stadium, so it was very exciting. It was like we were the traveling circus of the Missouri Valley Conference. Um, definitely a little shocked, but at the same time, I know how supportive you guys are, so it didn't surprise me too much. Uh, one thing that's really nice about the Panther Soccer Powers is, one, you guys show up to every game, not just the big ones, so it's really nice to have that compared to, you know, some student sections I've seen. And also, you guys actually know what you're talking about when it comes to soccer, and don't just yell at the players or yell at the other team. So, also nice to have a really respectful student section compared to some of the other ones we've seen this season. Be a soccer prowler, a Panther soccer prowler, to me, is definitely, I mean, it's a bunch of sports fans, right? So you're going, you're having a good time, you're being rowdy with it. You no, know, it's really nice just knowing that there's people outside of the team that also want to see you succeed. And so it feels like you're playing for something bigger than yourself. 
and it definitely is motivation to try and get a win for the other people that are there to support you constantly. The Panther Soccer Prowlers to me is something that's very special to me. It's my favorite thing I do at UNI. It's something that's close to my heart as a soccer fan, as a Panther fan, and also just something that I can call my own, something that I helped create uh, with my friends. And it's something that I could take a step back after I graduate, look at the university, be like, that's my impact, that's what I did at this university. So something that's very encouraging, and it's, it's something that is just what I look forward to during the soccer season. Whether it's a Thursday game, a weekend game, a home game, or an away game, it's something that I look forward to every week. Like, oh, I get through this week of classes, there's a soccer game Saturday, or there's a soccer game Sunday. Um, so it's, it's just something that's very fun to keep up with, and I feel like we're at a phenomenal university to do that, where we have support from everyone around us, from our organization, uh, team, coaches, players, faculty, parents, uh, really anyone we could ask for. And so it's something that's very special to me and something I look forward to both during the season and in the off season. I know a lot of people may look at us as annoying or obnoxious or or even brutal at times, and but I know that we're we have a positive impact on this soccer program here at U and I. Ultimately, I think I hope within the next ten years, Spencer and I can come back to U and I for a game in the future. And, and you know, look down at the hill and be like, dang, like this organization is still alive. We're hoping that it's still a thing within the next 10 years, 10, 20 years, you know, to come. But uh, I know that a lot of people have referred to us as a variety of different things, whether it's the Panther Six from the South Dakota game, or even uh, the Panther Mayhem, even though that organization died years ago. But, I hope that our brand stays. I hope our brand, I'm calling it as if it's like a big deal, our brand. I hope that our, our name sticks and that we are well known across campus because we are the Panther Soccer Prowlers. Just a mic check, so say whatever you want. Hey, my name's Ashley. <laughs> Perfect. That trip was the start of our tie streak. So it was kind of like one of those, yay, but aw, kind of things where it's like you're not good enough to win, as Bruce would say, but you're not bad enough to lose. So you gotta love that. <laughs> <laughs> That was just a really good shot. Okay. <laughs> um, answer whenever. I'll repeat that. Cheeto is the heart of the documentary. <laughs> there he goes. Yeah. <laughs> Cheeto, don't chew the tripod. <laughs> uh, definitely. I think Cheeto knows he is like one of the like big like. He's just gotta know that like all the smiles when he comes are like because of him. And that everyone, like, whenever the game is over, everyone's like, I gotta go see Cheeto now. So, yeah, I think he likes the attention towards himself. Whenever, don't wait for a signal, but do you think Cheeto is uh, still traumatized from Ashley? <laughs> oh, yeah, who isn't traumatized by Ashley? <laughs> 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 Right now we're just gonna do a quick sound check, so just say whatever you want. Brady rocks. Brady's the coolest. He is. I'm you don't, sure. oh, you yeah. don't need a lot. Oh, yeah. No, we're serious. Oh, Brady sucks. <laughs> there we go. Go. Yeah. M squared out. <laughs> Got you an eye. I guess I could probably see the best. Panthers 
section in the world. <laughs> I got We're out of here. <laughs> Thanks, Brady. No problem. <laughs>